Today, we are speaking with Eric Ajite Anan, who is a Ghanaian sculptor and fantasy design coffin carpenter. Though his family encouraged him to pursue office work, Eric chose instead to continue the work of his grandfather. He has been chosen for residencies in Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America, and his art is displayed in the museums and galleries throughout the world, including the Stanley Museum at the University of Iowa, the Chazen Museum of Art in Madison, Wisconsin, and the Royal Ontario Museum in Canada. Welcome to Story with Linda. Eric, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing, Linda? Good. I yeah. love uh, the, the outfit you're sporting. I know that's from Ghana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is it called? Uh, Batakari. Batakari. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and is one all over Ghana or just in some parts of Ghana? Um, it's actually from some part of Ghana, but now, you know, um so now we have a saying that we, we people say like uh Batakaria Doso and Tiyahunkramo Papa, which means now everybody puts on the Batakari so we don't recognize the Muslims. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it only Muslims who would wear it before? Yes, yes. Ah. <laughs> I mean, the madness, I would say. So now that's what they say, you know, because, you know, everybody puts the Batakari on. Okay. You don't recognize the Muslims, the nodness now. Wow. You know? Very, very yeah. interesting. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that it was, I didn't know it was worn mostly by Muslims in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I love that. It's, it's coming from know. the northern part of Ghana. Northern part of Ghana. Thank you for that education. Yeah. This is why I love You're this welcome. show. Even I am constantly learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll go into my first official question for you. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with the basics for my audiences who don't know what a fantasy or design coffin is. What is it? Okay, um, so, I mean, when we say coffins, coffins are, you know, boxes, um, to which you know people like deceased people are being put in for burials but when it comes to the design ones <clears throat> usually what um i'm originally from ghana so in ghana when somebody dies what we do is uh, we kind of build a coffin to represent their status mm -hmm. um they represent in the community so an example is um we have um, um symbols it could be you know, um, figures, it could be animals, it could be anything. So like a symbol of um, ego, like it's, uh, ego, mm -hmm. um, it's a symbol of strength and mm -hmm. also a symbol of leadership to rest. Mm -hmm. So usually, let's say, if an elderly person who is more, you know, prominent in the com community passes away, we kind of try to send them away in that kind of style. So okay. design coffin simply means uh, building coffees in the proverbial forms or um, um, significant forms that represent, you know, um, the the, um, the disease, yeah, the right. person while alive. Very yeah. cool, very interesting. And so you um, came into this profession because of your grandfather. Your grandfather started the the <laughs> the, the fantasy coffin business. Uh, okay, so I wouldn't say just that, but, um, you know, um, so back home in Ghana, what I do, I would be, I mean, people would call me like a coffin maker, people would call me like a carpenter, and of course, you understand when you are being called a carpenter, how much you make and, you know, the status you hold in the community, so nobody actually, you know, you know, after going to high school and you want to go to the university and stuff, Nobody wants to drop out of the university and then, you know, become a carpenter if the means is available, you know. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, the means could be available, but also it's an option of, you know, um, after school, what do you do, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you get to that stage where, you know, the family says, hey, you know, nobody actually went to college and you have to do it and be that. Mm -hmm. where you also understand, you know, this is a family legacy where mm -hmm. nobody is actually pursuing that. So it, it was a point where I have to choose between, 
you know, following the family legacy. I mean, you know, and not just following it as making it as a coffin mm -hmm. or like a carpenter, but also taking it to a different level. Mm -hmm. So that was when, you know, I had to be very firm in making my decision, especially when my dad was like, you know, you're not going to work in the studio, you know, um, you, you have to go back to school, you have to do that and these. And I'm like, no, I mean, this is what I have to do. And, you know, though I know I need your support, but I mean, if I don't get it, I can go somewhere and, you know, still go learn and, you know, come back. Mm -hmm. So it was actually tough, but, um, you know, I had to get through that. Yeah. 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 Um, and, and when I talk of the family legacy, when we talk of design coffins, my grandfather Kanekwe was the one who actually, uh, um, started the whole idea. So it was something which my dad, my grandfather was doing. My uncles and dads, my dad also, you know, were kind of also doing it. So I'm like kind of a third generation coffin maker. Yeah. Wow. So there's one interview that, that you did. Um, I believe it was with Danny TV. And when you started talking about the resistance that you faced when you decided to be uh, a sculptor, carpenter, you actually got very emotional in that interview especially when you said, you know, I remember you saying the things that people said, and then you got very emotional in that interview. And, and I'm just curious, why, why, why were you so emotional when you said that? So, you know, like, um, sometimes when you're making, especially when you're making some very serious, you know, uh, 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 decisions, when taking very serious decisions, when you don't know how the future is going to be for, for you, you kind of not sure. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like you're taking a little where it's going to work or it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if the, if you have the privilege to go to school, why don't you go? And to mm -hmm. me, you know, you go to college and after graduating, I mean, you know, the system in Africa, in Ghana, I mean, you graduate and you still have to, you know, follow the same process of looking for a job, you know, you know, like, you know, bowing for everybody. And also, trying to make ways to make the younger other, I mean, the younger generation understand that, you know, you can't just only make it, I mean, even without education, you can still make it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I actually took the path where I had to struggle and still not knowing where I was going to get to. Mm -hmm. And at that point I did that interview, it was kind of in the middle of, you know, my turning over, you know, like, from just being a coffin maker in Ghana to, you know, like a different stage where, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you have, I, 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 I have all these privileges of, you know, mm -hmm. being invited by museums and galleries and stuff where, you know, I go share mm -hmm. my experience being, you know, like a coffin maker. Mm -hmm. So it was actually um, kind of um, um, important for me. I mean, like, mm -hmm. and very, sad and happy moment so the cry I mean wasn't just you know being sad but also mm -hmm. to the stage where uh, I was getting into yeah so so it was it was a mixture of uh relief gratitude yeah yeah like I can see yeah. that just gratitude that I took the hard road but yeah. now it's paying off and hopefully it opened doors not just for you but for yeah. other, other so, generations, I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe others will not yeah. be judged as quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and also, um, again, you know, choosing to be a coffin maker, it comes with a whole lot of name calling, mm -hmm. you know, the provocation and stuff. So nobody wants to go to that aspect. You know, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Mm -hmm. So when I first came to Madison here, um, uh, I was trying to get connected to the, you know, like the Ghanaian community here. Mm -hmm. And um, so I spoke with Tom, Tom Loja about it. And um, um, uh, Tom, he tried, but most of the time it was like with the university. So like some students in the university, but mm -hmm. I actually wanna, wanted to come out there because, you know, I was living by myself and stuff. So um, um, actually, Tom was able to get through to get in touch with Ago, mm -hmm. Achia. Mm -hmm. And Ago was talking to some friends, you know, like some Ghanaian friends. And he said, oh, you know, 
uh, uh, the Ghanaian coffin maker is here. And then these friends were like, oh, he should be like an old guy, you know, like, you know, somebody. <laughs> so, you know, carpentry, <laughs> coffin making, you know, usually is associated to, you know, like grown-ups, you know, it's yeah. something which, you know, a lot of young people wouldn't want to get themselves into. So, yeah, it's all it all goes with it. <laughs> yeah, so interesting. Some old guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was a young Eric. <laughs> yeah. So later on they met me and they were like, Oh, we thought, you know, it's one of those old folks, you know, who just they just brought here and you know he was going to be here for like a month and then he goes back and that. But they didn't know, you know, it was a very young guy who, you know, mm -hmm. can hang out and you know, still share and learn from, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. I love these stories that, that, that you tell about how people react to your work. And that, that actually leads into my next question. Um, there's another story that you tell of someone commissioning your work for a restaurant. And then when you went there, the customers were like, no, 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 don't bring a coffin here. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm curious if, if your work is a tool and a vehicle to help us, um, get comfortable with with the idea of death do you think your work enables the conversation about death and dying it's becoming now it's becoming okay. and the reason i said that is um so in 2017 or 18 and you know there was this show going on in long beach and i was invited so i had to drive there you know with some friends so you know, I got a call and, you know, I was talking to, you know, like a friend and um, one of my friends behind me said, oh, you know, we're going to uh, Long, Long Beach to go make coffins. And they were like, what? <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> you know. He was like, yo, we're going to make coffins, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Like, you know, when you talk of coffins, you know, people are like, you know, what's going on, you know, yes. but after a while, you know, they kind of get, you know, used to read, they kind of get comfortable and stuff. Yeah. And I can tell you, I mean, um, there's been a lot of um, improvement. I mean, like when I started in Ghana, I tried one way or the other, you know, kind of share with younger, you know, people. Um, I've had, you know, like young um, college um, women come to Ghana to learn just so you know other you know the the girls you know the younger girls you know yeah. after school they stopped by the studio to talk to them and stuff and they couldn't believe it because they didn't think it was a job for women uh -huh. but you know women do woodwork in here yes. so you know that was kind of like you know I tried to also do it in the orphanage okay. and they didn't want me to do it they told me, you know, the kids are not interested in making coffins. And I'm like, no, it's not coffins. I'm just going to teach them, you know, some techniques where, you know, yeah. someday they might need them, you know, yes. they might use them and stuff. And I was never allowed to do that. Now mm -hmm. I get a lot of, you know, Requests. now a lot of them still think, you know, I'm in Ghana and, you know, like, so usually when I get to Ghana, sometimes I have people who want me to come hang out and, you know, yes. teach some techniques and stuff. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, an interview, like what I'm doing now and stuff. So that mm -hmm. has kind of, you know, changed mm -hmm. some perception <laughs> about people that, you know, I'm just working with wood and just, you know, yes. cutting and putting something together. It's all about the wood and glue and nails and, you know, whatever. <laughs> I love, I, I was watching one of your, your interviews and, and you said, you know, they should not be afraid. It's just wood. We're just putting wood and nails together. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and it's, even it's I like, felt better about coffins when I heard that. Oh yeah. Oh, you know, look, it's it's I basically have nothing to do with the disease. I mean, yes. I just, you know, once the family shows up, they tell me what they want. I just have to create what I have to create, knowing the size of the disease. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I don't have to know anything. I don't have to be there when the ceremony goes on and stuff. So okay. um I basically work with wood and tools i mean that's it wood and, yeah. tools. Wood and tools um <laughs> that, that that makes me want to ask you another question um mm -hmm. but let me ask this one um are you are you seeing um fantasy coffins in other countries now i, I tried searching online and i still i think i still see them mostly in ghana 
are they being made in other countries now? Yeah, they are being made in other countries. I mean, they are not being made in other countries, but other countries comes to buy them from Ghana, especially the Togolese and then the Ivorian, since, you know, we are neighbors. Okay. Uh, they come in to buy, but, you know, the transportation is really expensive. So yes. it's kind of a big deal. I mean, me per se, it's something that I wanted to grow it. Yes. And that's why I kind of have to go back home every now and then because the more I remain here, the more I kind of cut off from, you know, yes. um, building coffins for burial. Yes, yes. You understand? So, yes. th and that that affects me a lot because, you know, like I've been doing this for more than 20 years and it comes with an amazing story. I mean, like when the families arrive in the shop, mm -hmm. they don't just tell me, hey, we want coffin. We want it in the form of a pepper or cuckoo or something. Mm -hmm. But they first begin with, you know, the story of the deceased, oh. you know, what he was doing after mm -hmm. when he died and what actually killed him. Oh. So you get to understand, he has so much good stories yeah. where, you know, you know, like where, you know, I'm here and most of the time you only have to work by yourself yes. and nothing shows up. Yeah. And so it's kind of, you know, yeah. really difficult. So um i mean that's um one i mean i do struggle a lot with that so i mean yeah. a way of dealing with that is um you, me trying to go home every now and then just so i can still relate with um, wow. um, um what I, I i used to do so i mean usually when i go and i'm there i still work i mean right from the day i arrive you know, mm -hmm. I start working and I'm still with them in the shop till I leave. Till you leave. Wow. For, yeah. for our our viewers and listeners, uh, just to clarify, Eric is based in Wisconsin in the Midwest and he goes back and forth. So when he's saying, you know, it's important for me to be going back and forth, that's what he's saying. He's saying I need to be going back to Ghana and engaging with the community and engaging with the people. Um, but wow, what a rich conversation, Eric. Thank you so yeah. much. Now I know that you're, you're not welcome. just... You're not just a sculptor or coffin maker. You're a therapist. Yeah. You're a library <laughs> that has the story of people. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you you help people think about their deceased one in a different way and to celebrate yeah. them in a different way. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> is there anything else I would want to share with our viewers about your work? How should they keep up with you and everything that you're doing? Um. I mean, I've had like um, a lot of opportunities here, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, um, I'm still trying, you know, to make things work. But of course, I mean, um, this is not where it actually kind of, I mean, the design companies belong. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you could still make for the galleries, the yeah. museums and stuff, yeah. but it's not like, you know, you're making them in Ghana. I know. You can make some good cash when you sell them here. True. But, you know? you don't always follow the money. Sometimes some stories are more than just the money. So um, I I always want to balance my life and, you know, try to make things that, you know, try to make things work, you know, mm -hmm. the way it should be. So, yeah, okay. hey, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. So so you're hoping to find a balance in the future where you're, you're, you're serving that, um, that call that you got from your yeah. grandfather and others and, and then yes. still allow the world to enjoy it, maybe through museums and, and all of that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, thank yeah. you, Eric. I hope you find that balance. We know it's doable. and that's... Hey, it's doable, but, you know, when you're married, you can do it just like that. So a lot of thanks to my wife and my son who kind of allow me to, I mean, make all these happens. I mean, yes. hey, they, they're great people. I thank love you, them so wifey. much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, wifey and, and, and child. <laughs> For allowing the great Eric to do what he's able to do. Well, thank hey, you so thank much, you so Eric. Much, it's Linda. been a joy chatting with you. Hey, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>